Welcome to episode two of the Bass Players Book Club, where I delve into the instructional books that have had the biggest positive impact on my playing over the last 18 years. In the first episode, we looked at how to not waste your time in pursuit of non-musical technique, and today we're going to look at sight reading. But you know what the worst part of all is? I never learned to read! Before I get started, I just want to make it clear that this is not going to be a video about the merits of notation versus tab or a debate on that subject that's been done to death already i don't actually think that taking music in by eye in any form is the best way to do things but it is useful in a number of situations uh, and people seem very very happy to nod along when the very tired analogy of music is a language is trotted out but then appear to be completely reluctant to actually do the work when it comes to learning to read and write that language i'm going to start with a story i took up the bass at the age of 14 partially to annoy my parents, but largely because I was too scared to talk to girls and I thought that it might help. And I started having lessons at school with a guitar teacher who played enough bass to get away with teaching it, which is pretty much always the case. And straight away we got into using tab. And what an amazing system. It tells you exactly where to plonk your fingers and suddenly out comes Green Day. Fantastic. Now in the dark days of the pre-YouTube internet era, I had to scour sites like MX Tabs or Active Bass in the hope of finding the numbers corresponding to my favourite songs. And pretty quickly I graduated from Nirvana to Rage Against the Machine and then from the Chili Peppers to Dream Theatre. And by the time I was 19 and uh, I went to music college with my six string Ibanez bass, I thought that I really knew my stuff. And then in the first lecture I got confronted with this. Now some of you might recognise that as Flea's groove on Alanis Morissette's You Ought to Know, but to me it just looked like some horrific hieroglyphics. Now obviously I'd seen notation before, I was aware of it, but I definitely never tried to read on the bass. So this was somewhat of a rude awakening and uh, swiftly put me back to square one. And I realised that I had to get my act together pretty quickly and learn to read almost immediately. And in that first year I went from being you know, pretty much bottom of the pile to fairly near the top of the class. And here's how I did it. The first and most important point, and this applies to any skill that you're learning, is that you have to do it every day. If you want to really learn to read, you have to get your hands dirty and get some notes in your face every single day, otherwise it won't stick. Now, uh, when I was a student, my lectures didn't begin till 11 in the morning, so I would get up at 7.30 and do an hour or two of reading before classes began. Now, you don't have to do a big chunk of time like that, but you do have to do it a little bit every day, otherwise things just won't stick. The second thing that accelerated my progress was separating rhythm from pitch when I was practicing reading. And this is something that I still do to this day. Now for pitch, uh, when I was you know, getting the basics together, I used Gary Willis's Extreme Sight Reading app on his website, which might still be available. Uh, and what it does is it generates rows of random pitches without any rhythm. Uh, and you can adjust the range of the exercises depending on how many strings you have on your bass. Uh, and you can adjust the probability of accidentals depending on your pain threshold. For rhythm, I use this book, Modern Reading in 4-4 Time by Louis Belson, uh, which is a pretty standard text for drummers, but anything that they can do, we should be able to do just as well, if not better. Uh, there's no pitch variation whatsoever in that book. It's purely rhythmic work, uh, and it's designed to improve your familiarity with syncopation and it takes you through pretty much every single rhythmic possibility in 4-4 from very simple to absolutely horrible. The main secret to sight reading is training your eyes and your brain to look ahead of where you are in the music. If you're looking at the note that you're actually playing when you're playing it then you're in pretty big trouble because you've got no hope of anticipating any big changes in the music, any position shifts, things like that. Um, so the way to do that the way to develop that ability to look ahead is to use a metronome and that forces your eyes to start looking ahead of where you are in the music. And this is great practice for, you know, real world reading situations because if you're on a gig and you're reading, you can't go back and fix those mistakes. And you can't get the band to slow down for difficult passages. So use a metronome and force yourself to look ahead and just keep going. If you make a mistake, just keep going. That's really important because that will, again, train your eyes to look ahead. In order to become a well-rounded reader, it's really important that you expose yourself to as much different stuff as you can. So if you only ever do classical etudes as part of your reading study, then you know chances are your pitch reading will be great, 
but your rhythm reading might be lacking when it comes to sight read that Tower of Power chart on a gig. Similarly, if all you play is linear funk lines in 16th notes, you're going to be struggling if you pitch up on a musical theatre gig and there's loads of key changes and things like that. Related to the point of being well read is that you need to get good at reading music that is not intended for the bass. So doesn't matter what it is, get your hands on piano vocal scores, violin sonatas, trombone etudes, could be anything at all. Get some music that you've never seen before that is not written for the bass and put it on your instrument because that's good practice for real world working situations. The sad reality is that no one really cares about bass players and you need to stop expecting to turn up to uh, a gig or a session or a theatre show and be given a pristine nicely laid out bass clef chart because that nine times out of ten that will not happen um, particularly if you operate in that sort of amateur musical theatre world the people that you work with or for will not have the resources to buy in the parts and they will not have someone arrange you a bass part. More often than not, what you will get is a piano vocal score, usually the rehearsal piano score, which is horrible. And the MD will probably say something like, well, the bass is just the left hand of the piano, isn't it? Which makes my blood boil. If you've ever been in a piano score situation, you will realize that it's like those choose your own adventure books, except every option results in your death. Now, the only way to survive that is to have a good handle on notes outside of your usual bass range because with the piano you're going to have to deal with super low ledger lines for the left hand because the piano is not octave transposing and it goes down way below even the low B of a five string bass um, so get good at transposing very very low notes which you never play normally up an octave then on the other side of things you need to get handled on treble clef because much as even the left hand of the piano sometimes gets written in treble clef and also you never know when that day will come where someone gives you a chart for something on a gig and you're expected to read the melody, which is written in treble clef. Above all, being a good treble clef reader as a bass player is great for being able to taunt guitar players, which everyone should be into. Here are some of my favorite sight reading books. I've grouped them roughly by ability level, so hopefully there'll be something here for everyone. If you're new to reading, I'd suggest getting a general reading method. So the ones that I used uh, when I was starting out, the Musicians Institute, MI, Music Reading for Bass, which is great. The thing I like about this is it is very sort of linear and progressive and it gradually drip feeds in things like accidentals, key signatures, um, and other notational devices, so that's good. The other one is Simplified Sight Reading for Bass. It's not actually that simple. Uh, by Josquin Dupre. I know that I talked a lot of trash about one of his other books in the last video, but that's because that book is terrible. This is not, this is actually pretty good. Um, and a great thing that it does, as I mentioned before, it separates rhythm from pitch. So the first half is just rhythm reading, second half brings in pitch. So Simplified Sight Reading for Bass, well worth a look if you're starting out. For everyone watching this, if you don't own this book, you should own this book. Louis Belson, Modern Reading Text in 4-4 Time. It's like the holy grail for getting a handle on rhythm. Use that book. I talk about this other book in almost every video that I do, but that's because it's one of my favourite things, and I sincerely believe it's one of the best resources for bass players. Franz Simandl's New Method for the Double Bass, book one. Uh, this starts out pretty simple, pretty straightforward, in half position, first position, and gradually gets more complicated as it moves up the neck. This really got my technique together and sorted out my reading at the same time. So I can't recommend this book enough. It completely changed my playing. If you feel like you've got a firm grasp on the basics of sight reading and want to push your skills to the next level, then these books are definitely worth a look. The first one is something that I think should be required reading for everyone which is Standing in the Shadows of Motown, the life and music of the legendary bassist James Jameson. Uh, a collection of Jameson transcriptions and some recordings of some very big name 80s bass players trying to play them with varying degrees of success and authenticity. Very interesting to listen to the CD and hear who can read really well and who actually grew up with Jameson. Anyway, um, this is an invaluable resource for sight reading and just 
for life as a bass player in general because Jameson was the first electric bass virtuoso, essentially. Um, and working through these transcriptions gives you loads of rhythmic syncopation ideas, tons of 16th note syncopation to work through, lots of chromaticism, just lots of great lines. So can't recommend that book enough. Uh, on the classical side of things, which is great for pitch reading, I'm going to recommend the Dot Zauer 113 Etudes for Cello in three volumes. You might be able to pick up a copy that has all three volumes at once. If not, volume one is great to start with, obviously. These were recommended to me by a teacher as a superior alternative to the Hanon Virtuoso Pianist books, which became very, very popular a few years ago because Yannick Wisdala came out and said that those books were basically how he built his technique, which is uh, at a pretty high level, as many of you will know. Anyway, I prefer the Dot Sauer stuff. I find it a little bit more melodically interesting than Hannon. And what I like about this is because it's written at concert pitch for cellos, you get loads of low C. So if you've got a five string bass, great practice for that. If you have a four string bass, still get it. And you can develop the skill of transposing things up an octave at sight, which is a pretty valuable skill to have as a working reading bass player or just as a you know a well-skilled musician if we're talking about classical studies then we need to talk about the Bach cello suites as well um, it seems like everyone in the world does a recording of the first one the G major uh, prelude prelude number one in G major that guy um, but the whole thing is worth a look these are really difficult to play and to read obviously and Bach knew a thing or two about harmony and about melodic development so they're really good on a sort of musical level again as with the dots hour thing use them as longer term studies I would say rather than just day to day sight reading fodder Anthony Vitti is a bass player that I think deserves a lot more time in the spotlight than maybe he gets at the moment compared to other bass teachers he's been teaching at Berkeley basically forever and has written a ton of great instructional material. His slap bass books are some of the only books on the subject that I don't absolutely hate. Anyway, the Finger Funk Workbooks, Volume 1 and 2, are a fantastic resource for getting your 16th note syncopation linear funk playing together. Uh, lots of rhythmic vocabulary, obviously, as you'd expect, given the genre, and loads of interesting melodic twists and turns that you probably wouldn't expect. Um, these are a great resource as well if you're looking to develop your technique in both hands, not just the right hand. Uh, the tempos of some of the exercises are pretty horrific, but as a sort of a long-term technique and reading study, these books are really great. Finally, if you're a veteran reader and you're feeling particularly masochistic and you want something to really push your skills, then here are some recommendations. The first of which, on the rhythmic side of things, Louis Belson's Revenge. Not content with modern reading in 404, he went and wrote an odd time book, which takes you through all those horrible meters that you try and avoid. Things with sevens and nines and uh, sixes and fives. And then he combines them in exercises, which is very painful, to say the least. A lot of hard work, but very nutritious. After all that rhythm, you're going to need some pitch in your life. So I'd suggest John Patitucci's 60 Melodic Etudes. So John Patitucci is one of a handful of players who can really be called a virtuoso on both the electric and the upright bass. The only other one I can think of off the top of my head is Christian McBride, possibly Tom Kennedy as well. If you can think of others, then let me know. Anyway, given John Patitucci's pedigree, it's no surprise that his instructional books are a complete roast up. And 60 Melodic Etudes is designed to get your ears and your fingers used to playing and hearing the sounds of the modes, the major scale modes, over their five distinct chord types in all 12 keys. It also has some exercises using the melodic minor scale over half diminished chords. So if you were to practice these exercises with some sort of drone or a static chord in the background, they form great ear training exercises as well as horrendous technique and sight reading workouts. The problem with these, or the, difficult, the main difficulty I find, is that the pitch variation is huge. Loads and loads of things where you're reading, you know, four or five ledger lines up above the above the stave and then you suddenly have to be back down to play a low F. So if you're using a four string bass, it's a bit of a nightmare. If you're using a six string bass, it's probably still a nightmare because you have to play the six string bass. Anyway, a lot of position shifts, so very, very good, very challenging in a number of ways. 
Last on the list is Anthony Vitti's Advanced Sight Reading Studies, where Anthony brings the pain in a collection of etudes that combine horrendous 16th note syncopation with plenty of unexpected pitch variations. His favourite trick with these is to develop a motif which you think is going to repeat and then throw in lots and lots of subtle variations. So the sheer amount of variation in both rhythm and melody makes them pretty much impossible to memorise, which is ideal for sight reading practice, which means that you can use them, you know, again and again and again when you feel up to it. You can take six months off after trying to read these at tempo and then come back to them and you won't remember a single thing about them. So there we go. Some sight reading tips and plenty of source material for sight reading practice. Now, undoubtedly, I will have omitted some people's favourite reading books. If there's a title that you think has really helped out your reading and deserves wider attention, then let me know by leaving a comment below.